Welcome to Advocacy Help Desk, where advocacy comes to learn, laugh, and make advocacy fun. Here are your hosts, Brian Fratkin what, what? and Andy Polk. Back on the desk. Here we go, folks. Another great edition of Advocacy Help Desk. We are a network of advocacy innovators and practitioners plying our trade for many, many years. It's hard to say plying sometimes, <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> but you did it. Uh, and this show is a free podcast, or you can watch it on YouTube, uh, for folks in advocacy. Uh, we wanted to take all the great conversations we heard at all the different conferences around town when we're having coffee with our friends and digitize those and spread those across the entire continent. The interwebs. And maybe even the world. And the world. I don't know if we have somebody from Brussels listening. I hope so. Ooh, I think we saw a couple of folks from Did Brussels. We? Yeah. Bonjour. <laughs> Dual language, baby. There it um, is. But uh, as always, I want to thank our partners who help us put on this show to help um, really kind of the whole goal is to raise the game for everybody. Right. Um, in a non-competitive way, help spread spread best practices and tips so everybody gets better. Um, and helping me do that on the help desk is uh, is producer Blake in in, a, in, in the glass booth. And hey, Blake. I'm lucky to be in here today. <clears throat> That's right. That's right. Uh, he's with Human Factor. He does our association's podcast, FDRA, called Shoe Video, and Show. Video, audio. He does, all, does, he does many media uh, operations for our association. cameras right now. He helps solve our workflow challenges so that we can be the best talent that we can be. That's, That's what right. I call you. We the need talent. all the help we can get. That's right. The talent. And uh, and here to my left is my uh, partner in crime, Brian Fracken with Spark Influence. Uh, they build technology and software to help uh, kind of coalesce communities, build communities, and help those communities tell their stories and advocate I better. Hate data silos. That is the entire idea. Okay. Advocacy is more than letters and phone calls and tweets. That's, That's it. Right. That's where we're going today. All right. Well, um, one of the the hottest most pressing challenges that we're all facing in the association world in the advocacy world in our in our families in our personal spaces and in our community we got good social distance here that's right that's we right spread out spread um out. is the coronavirus that um has, what is what is this coronavirus that's right yeah, if right. you haven't heard blake Corona? you are in the bubble i'm in a glass booth that's <laughs> right. i don't need to worry about a thing but it's um Obviously, we every you know last night I was watching the nightly news and 15 minutes of the news was dedicated to ticking off all the things that were happening globally right. and in the U.S. The spread happening across across the country, how people should prepare, etc. We are not going into health policy in terms of we're not making guesses here. Wash your hands. We don't know whatever you need. We don't know where it's headed. We are here today to talk about um, a response. Um, and leading um, as uh, association professionals and advocacy professionals for our groups. What is happening in the association world, right. in the advocacy world, in the PAC world, right. just across our profession? So we'll talk about some events that are happening, what some associations are doing, including mine, right. um, and some ideas, because I think ultimately the response to this, this virus and the spread is happening in D.C., and we'll talk about a huge opportunity that associations have to make sure that their their members are informed in a way that they you know obviously i we do footwear we don't do healthcare policy no, of course but it's but important folks are turning that keep, to you right to understand our job is to translate policy that's right um well, it's so a today, different language right. today on the desk on the desk who we got on the desk mary kate cunningham may, all right from asae thank you so much welcome for me. welcome thank you for coming i love this top look so so Today is a, is an important topic, right? right Obviously, right. We're, as you said, we're not making guesses. We're not sitting here talking about impact, et cetera. What we are talking about is how associations, corporations, nonprofits, et cetera, are are currently responding to it. What right. we're seeing as trends, and and just in general, what can associations do to be out in front of this for their members? Because that's that's what they're right. looking for, right? Right. Right. So, uh, Mary Kate, I know it's a it's a tough topic to discuss, but just in terms of, I know that you guys sent a letter recently to the president talking about associations and that impact. Can you tell us a little bit more about sort of what, what not just this specific coronavirus, but it's just a pandemic might do to associations, how they rely on some of these events and what that might mean for them just in the future? 
We're really concerned for associations because face-to-face meetings are so vital to the work that we do. And we are so connected to the tourism and travel community, the conventions and visitors bureaus. We've seen great work by U.S. Travel to really get the industry together and protect travel and tourism. (laughs) We are concerned that if there are associations um, could have huge impacts on cancellations. We're already seeing a ton of cancellations going out through the summer, not just right now. So it's something. So starting where, now and going out through June, July. <laughs> can you not cough on the podcast while we're doing this, or are you just coronavirus. trying to like? No. Um, <laughs> but so you're seeing this from now through June infected. through yep. July. What what kind of time frame are we talking about? We, we've seen through the summer, but also just people c- concerned about what they have scheduled because we don't know what's going to happen. No, of this course, is all changing by the hour it seems, and CDC guidelines are changing. So, um, but we know that congressional staff also are um, in flux. Some offices just today or recently have started going to um, a smaller staffing. Mm -hmm. Some are staff want to do meet virtually. But if you think about um, Congress is probably more of a petri dish than an airport right now because there's so many meetings and and shaking hands and members of Congress wanting to press the Everybody is coming in. So this is the fly-in piece that associations do so well is bringing folks into town to meet their, we talked about this before, to meet their legislators, to, to convey what they need to convey and and that happens with personal stories and personal mm-hmm. stories are tougher to tell over non-personal yeah. situations right and Absolutely. so so they're coming in and they're meeting legislators still now and that's it sounds like some are um, postponing definitely mm-hmm. we've heard of some doing virtual meetings um I, obviously we'd be the, we're such supporters of face-to-face meetings but this is uncharted territory here of right. so I talked to um, a staffer, a friend of mine who works on the Hill the other day and raised the issue. Are you hearing from people um, about doing virtual meetings? Um, Mm -hmm. Skype works really well, FaceTime, Zoom, any of these things. In our industry, we've done it um, over the last year. We've First, you have to socialize yourself to it to understand how to do it and set it up and make it work. But it, it functions really well if you don't have a physical challenge and you can communicate. It's perfectly fine. And he pointed out, he goes, you know, it's a really good idea. We haven't really considered it. We're just not socialized to having that. We're so used to face to face. But it would it would be a great tool to help prevent mayors or or city councilmen or county commissioners or board of education members from flying up during the spring to advocate during uh, a prop season. If mm-hmm. they could do it somewhere in the district, save them money, save you know. You know, prevent some some kind of health issue that they might have. That we can do it. We can figure it out. So, I think staffers are very willing to do it. I think they'll be more willing as we go through it. Um, Mm -hmm. Once you do one of those things, it's quite easy to do it. it. Um, But it also is a huge opportunity because you can, if you if you have a strong grassroots program, you can get people locally. Um, you know, to talk about those issues instead of just us going to the Hill to do it. Right. It's a new grassroots way of doing things. It could be very effective, cost effective. So a virtual fly-in yep. um, where you schedule multiple ones can still happen. It may not be, I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know the effectiveness of it um, mm-hmm. because if you can get a local person that couldn't be here anyway and they're from the person's district and they're telling the story, it could be just as effective as a fly-in where sure. you're getting someone from, from a, you know, corresponding district, maybe not the same one for the member. So, but the point is there is a huge opportunity to still have fly-ins, but do it virtually. And if you're smart about it, you can stagger it to where over three days, you still have that critical force on the Hill where you're, you're hitting those offices. Um, And I don't think it's too difficult. Software doesn't cost too much, but there is a socialization both for Hill staff and for, for people at home, but people are going to be more willing to do it than ever before. I mean, it's, it's an opportunity for associations to lead on that front, I think. So, Are, are you getting those types of questions? Are you seeing <clears throat> folks coming to you being, and you mentioned this before and we'll get into it, is, is folks are turning to associations to give them guidance on, on how they should be reacting with what they're doing. Are you seeing that a lot, Mary Kay? Yeah, I think so. We are also are seeing... Um, at the same time while everyone's dealing with this at once so it is um it is kind of under it's nice to know that it's not just someone's problem we're all facing this and also we are aware that congress is so busy trying to figure out what's the aid package that they might um 
we want to be sensitive that our own issues we bring to the Hill are not necessarily top of mind during this crisis for them. Right. right. So, well, I would, that's a great point, too. You yeah. know, the, the flip side is, you know, we hear a lot about the travel industry with the airlines and the hotels and all that. And I think it's obvious we all know that they're really going to be hit because mm-hmm. obviously, you know, when you shelter in place or you're quarantined of some sense, it, it means there's, you know, they're not going to have any business in that sense. But the flip side is, too, it's it's going to impact every single industry. So at the front end, yes, it's going to be travel tourism. But on the back end, it's going to be all the rest of the companies as well. I've issued two refunds already. There you go. So at the front end, we may see this may be this may be a multifaceted because for my hills in the day, I just think, you know, we used to roll out multiple packages because you roll out the initial package to help, you know, help mm-hmm. help stabilize. And then you get down the road and you're like, it's not enough. You got to do another package. So there could be multiple aid packages coming. And it's, again, it's another opportunity to lead. So I know, you know, ASAE led for all of us associations by saying, keep it top of mind. You know, when you're considering this, we have all these fly-ins, we have all these issues. These are, these are associations that help, help our government function to its best ability. So don't forget about that. Um, we also sent a letter to the White House saying the payroll tax deduction we're all for 100 sure. percent will help our our workers at retail stores. But, you know, even quicker than getting congressional approval on our end was uh, duty reduction. Can we reduce tariffs down? Can we mm-hmm. what are the levers we can use? We don't have a lot of economic tools like we once had after right. after the Great Recession with quantitative easing. Um, with reduction Ooh, of interest we're rates. Into it now, yeah, absolutely. But, the, easy. but it but it becomes an issue from a policy perspective as to how do we juice the economy and and get consumer confidence back? And it's it's become you know it's one of those things where associations need to factor that in today and figure out okay this aid package may be something for these groups. Sure. And but isn't the payroll. argument, Andy, that that like what if you give the aid, what are they going to spend it on if you're locked in? Like that was what I heard on some radio thing. If we give if we give everybody money, they're still locked in and they're not going to go anywhere. Well, I think it's it's to it's a bridge. It's like a bridge loan, right? It's almost, you can think of it that way, where it helps stabilize the problem. Um, and and it could be we don't know what the aid package look like. Could be government loans. Could be government incentives. Could be tax reductions. We don't know what they're going to come up with yet. But it bridges the gap to get them to where they need to go, so that they're not shuttering their doors. Because ultimately. If we don't, this is a policy fix speech. Jeez. If we don't, if we don't provide that, and they do shutter, it would cost our economy yeah. much, much more to reopen um, shuttered doors than it would be to provide this. So it's, but the point is for associations, this is this is not the only opportunity. This round, there's mm-hmm. going to be multiple rounds right. coming, and you need to you need to plan today to figure out how you're going to build your efforts and make your ask. What's the ask going to be? You know, are you going to do a virtual fly in? Are you going to send in emails, letters, tweets? How are you going to do this to make sure your folks' voices are heard and and you plan a day to do that, I think. And we're seeing each association is tackling this differently, totally dependent on who their members are, companies, individuals, if they have a chapter structure. So, and some are focused on the sick leave, trying to get some oh, sort yeah. of support for that. That's a good point. We, and we really want people to still be able to be paid and be able to put that money back in right. the economy. Right, right. And some associations are focused on the, really the meeting side or, or uh, cancellation of conferences. Right. But there, there's a lot to this. And then what are the second and third order effects? And so for you, are you sort of, uh, I don't want to say, uh, we all segment our databases, right, in that way. So you're sort of segmenting and say, okay, here are the messages that we're preparing and sort of plans that we're thinking through. By no means are we telling you what to do, but mm-hmm. just for X, Y, and Z happening, here's what we're thinking needs to happen in travel and, and, and hotel and whatnot. And for engineering associations, here's what we think. Is that sort of some of the planning that you guys are doing right now to sort of try to segment those groups out to be able to address them in their own way? We're trying to be a resource overall, and then people come to us okay. with mm-hmm. questions or suggestions. But um, we know it's each association to, has to be supportive of their own industry, and then what we're able to do is kind of be industry-wide umbrella and say this is the association so general message. Gotcha. So, so what, from what you're hearing from folks, are you hearing a mix of people still trying to plan some fly-ins um, and events, and then some people are just going ahead and canceling and pushing it back? I mean, what, is there a 50-50? Is there a 20-30? Is there... I, oh. I, there are still definitely associations that have um, really major conferences right. that support the association for the entire year. Right, and sure. they, are, they really have to push forward. Can we talk about that for one second? When you say they support the association for the entire year, I think um, just quickly, can we can we talk about sort of what a what an association is, right? Mm-hmm. And then when you say support the association for the entire year, what what does that mean with some of these events? 
we, uh, anecdotally, so what an association is, there are trade and professional associations. The professional associations represent the individuals in an industry or a profession, and the trade associations represent the, uh, the companies in, a, in an industry. Gotcha. And the, um, I think most people know Associations 101, but if you didn't, that's right. the basis. Yeah. No, always good to just yeah. touch on it for a second. And what ASAE does is provide the content career community for association professionals. So we're the Association of Associations. <laughs> <laughs> did yes, you know? Did you but, know there's an association for everything? Right. There, gosh, there, there truly is, and they're vital to represent professions and industries. And I can't wait to have you back on to talk about the power of A and sort Absolutely. of the great advocacy that you guys do mm-hmm. on the association world. Um, so, talking about some of the different ways that they're segmenting, and, and to Andy's question, uh, what sort of what are you guys doing with these with these groups, and what are you seeing with with what's happening? I think we're trying to help um, share resources. We have ASA has a, a page where we're sharing all of the information we have, either from how to deal with how to assess your contract for with, a, with four different conferences to um, the latest CDC news. We have uh, forty six thousand members, all different mm-hmm. types of folks around the country and around the world. So we're trying to provide resources. And so ASAE, the website itself, you're you've set up a coronavirus yeah. sort of page. Kind of the consultants, of, right? You're the consultants yeah. for the associations where they're like. Like I have no idea where to yeah. turn to. You're gonna, they're gonna call you up, and you're gonna say, "Here's what we're hearing. Mm-hmm. We're not gonna advise you on exactly what to do, but right. here's what we're hearing on these instances. Here's some best practices and tips mm-hmm. so Absolutely. they get a little bit better." And right? you guys are updating that continually throughout the day Absolutely. on the ASA website, so that folks in the association space yeah. can get a better idea. Hey, of what's Brian, happening. what's the ASA website? Uh, ASAECenter.org. Gonna... ASAECenter.org. There ASAECenter.org. You now, Andy, you guys took the – now, being that footwear is – a lot of the production is based out of China, you guys mm-hmm. have been on top of this issue for more than six weeks now and have already yeah. canceled all of your spring events through – when When are you looking to even think about having another mm, in-person? Yeah, we, we saw the wave coming because it was – you know, it started inner China and then – and then – because for footwear production, we're so reliant on migrant workers coming in from inner China to the coastal regions to where all the factories are. Sure. Um, so we knew as soon as the Lunar New Year, the Chinese New Year ended, typically you see this large migration that happened across China back to work. And it did not happen. And we were waiting, waiting, waiting. So it at first it impacted our factories. And then and then slowly our, our companies started implementing travel bans. So um, we we are supposed to have a uh, event um, n- not too long from now, and uh, we made the decision um, about three weeks in advance to cancel our event. And it, we didn't do it lightly because it, we're in some ways we're having to eat money. Sure. And we're one of those groups where we use our events to fund our association. We keep our dues low so that we can get as many people as possible in the door. Yep. And then we, you know, it's almost like a progressive tax system where we we then run events in order to fill our coffers so that we can continue to provide great services. But, you know, it's a, one a, educate, it's almost educate like a libertarian side. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, all right, if you're going to use this, then you pay this. And, and that's great. So this is one of our keystone events where we had all our executives come to town. We talked about the politics, the reasons to stay involved, all the things that groups have when they come here. We typically had a, a fly in arm attached to it. So one day we do a, a big summit and then we the next day we go to the hill um we weren't necessarily doing that this year but um but yeah so we just heard from everybody and they were like basically like we're not allowing our employees to travel to group meetings it's business critical so if it's a face-to-face or a small group at a sure. at somebody's you know headquarters that's fine but for big group meetings more than 20 people or something like that we're not allowing it so it just became a uh, uh, Chris like a, a snowball effect where we just saw people leaving in droves and we were like what is the point of actually facilitating a networking event and and doing this and having people concerned about their health and safety so we just made the decision so at this point and this is probably what a lot of associations are focused with though um, so we have a, a fifty thousand dollar hit <clears throat> we're negotiating with the hotel I love to get getting a, into the details to get That's a nice. credit I was just gonna go there yeah. to get a credit to push forward. So hopefully exactly. we'll get a we'll get a credit that we'll, we we can then set up an event in the fall. The challenge is everybody's setting up an event in right. the fall. So you're trying to push it God, beyond I didn't the even summer. Thought of that. Yeah. So you're trying to push it beyond the summer um and get to the fall. So all of a sudden what was a springtime crunch becomes a fall time crunch. Sure. So I should invest in Marriott in <laughs> yeah, like basically. August. But for for the hotels if you can think about it too, um they're looking at annual revenue spend. So if they're moving their event, they're going to be willing to work with you, especially if you, we, we've done it at the the 
Washington Hilton, which is behind the White House. There's a Capitol Hilton. Very confusing. Um, the Washington Hilton for several years now, so they know us. We work with them, so that makes a big difference in negotiation. Great hotel, great people. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that all comes into play, and ultimately, we we said, you know, um, strategically, if we have to eat the whole thing and we don't get any credit, what are we going to do? Right. And um, that's where you go back to your board and get buy-in and say, this is what we're doing. This is the decision. If we have to eat this, you know. The other thing is all the other events that we have too that fill in money. Sure. Um, we're going to eat those too, and we've we've for the industry we're going to keep doing this. Um, more broadly, it's going to be a challenge. Our dues are based on economic growth within our industry, and so if we see a drop, we can see a drop in dues. So how are we reducing internally? And this is getting really strategic. But how do we reduce internally spend? How do we reduce sure. our expenditures? How do we but cut that, back? That means so, potentially cost cutting cutting employees, right? If you're reducing internal spend. No, it's every I, every association has a huge amount of waste. It's, it's Andy's <laughs> talk, man. That's not the position talk, of ASAE. Okay. No. <laughs> it's Andy's I, three martini lunch. I think, well, it is. I mean, it's like you don't go out to business lunches anymore, and you um, you don't need to travel anymore, so that cuts out your expenditure okay. there. Okay. And, and um, the flip side is you then put money into digital assets like the Zoom conference or you do a podcast. Podcast. You there you go. Good things idea. like that, where you can you can keep your education sure. up. So what we did was we transitioned a lot of our events, and we're working on right now a lot of our physical events to digital events, and we're charging the same amount, and hopefully we get a larger reach. So we'll see. But you got it's hard decisions, of and course. you cut back. And it sounds and, like every every association obviously has to make their own choices right. with their own knowledge, with their own culture, with their own people. Um, what kind? So so the guidance is up, and you guys are reviewing it daily. Are you how how deep into that guidance are you guys going? I mean, how how in depth is it? Are folks coming to say should we put on a Zoom conference? Should we start a podcast? Are folks or like, coming or like to how this? do I get my money back for the or or even that? I mean, what I mean, kind of questions yeah, I mean, are you are you facing? I think it, it, that is so industry specific, okay. but it really um, it does d d depend on the culture of the membership and that type of thing. But I, I, what I'm hopeful is that once this virus subsides, that people will see the um, double down on the value of face to face meetings because mm -hmm. we missed it so much. And it, there is really like something that, yeah. special about meeting in person and the conversations in the hallway that lead to a new initiative that you don't get in virtual. Mm -hmm. So we can survive for when we have to, but I really think um, there'll be an excitement to go back to face to face when is, we're able to. Is there a common question you're getting though? Is there like one that you're consistently getting? I think people are having to judge, take the temperature of their board and their membership to determine what makes the most sense for them. And it really does depend on the culture. But at least that 101 is taking the temperature of uh, mm -hmm. taking the temperature. I Good. think your point nice. about the face-to-face oh. -face meetings is huge because, you know, we talk a lot about our meetings on the Hill and how important it is to be in front of policymakers. Sometimes the best meetings are the small groups that you're walking around with. Mm -hmm. And Joe and Bob are from – Joe's from Chicago oh, and Bob's from saying. Florida and they're having a conversation about their businesses and all of a sudden – they form a great relationship and there's a new idea saying. that's like, what if Absolutely. we did this? I mean, yeah. there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of benefits to to having these these meetings beyond what we talk about on the show. Um, a, there's a lot of force multipliers that happen yeah. at, at those events that you can't have in a digital space. Are exactly. you guys ramping up Power of A in response to some of the non uh, so your own fly-ins, your own events, are you, ra uh, you know, are you ramping up your own advocacy efforts in different ways, different digital things to respond to that? I think that will that will tell. We ha I mean we still have in-person things planned for the spring, so okay. we'll see. We're we've got some members of Congress getting awards and things like that, mm -hmm. but um, we do have our Power of A uh, Stronger by Association podcast. And first episode just launched. Congratulations! <laughs> exactly. yeah, yes, I listened to it. I loved it. It was <laughs> thank great. You. Um, that's it's nice that that's something that people can still listen to when yeah. they're at home. That's wonderful. I think that's what it is too. Is we you know. Blake does our podcast and we have two over 200 episodes now and our big marketing campaign now is if you're locked in at home or you're at the office and right. you get bored or you need professional development go back into our catalog we focus really hard on keeping things there evergreen yeah. so the idea mm -hmm. is like if you're if you're in logistics we've got 10 episodes and it's the same challenges of getting product from one place to another so you can get new ideas or just stay engaged and things like that come so, the fall you'll be ready <laughs> yeah exactly but it is I mean it is difficult I mean it's a it's a tough time and there's there's a lot of strategy that that needs to be thought through on um and some people are going to eat some money somewhere and it's going to be one of those things where it's like 
you have to tighten the belt a bit, right. unfortunately. Um, right. And and it's not going to be it's not going to be easy. And we don't know how long this is last. It could go away in spring or summer. Or, right. You know, we may find a cure very quickly, and things could ship shape. But I think um, I think this is a really good opportunity for for our groups to rethink what we're doing and why we're doing it instead of the traditional oh we'll do this way it's like all right we do want to do that but how can we do it better and more efficient you know how do how do we add in new innovations at this point um and i and i do think it's a instead of i I don't believe in being very negative and and so it's it's tough not to with all the nightly news and all the different things happening and the deaths and everything but for associations it's a real positive to reinforce like the the virus is being managed from washington dc you need someone here to translate what's happening and tell you what's happening um to help you know maybe not make decisions on your business but just be here if there's an opportunity we're going to be here right Mm -hmm. and we're going to be here and and we're going to be on the glass to get the rebound we're going to like make sure people know what's happening your voice will be heard during this time in case there's more economic damage i don't know but it's just um and we know associations bring people together and they are they bring subject matter experts in the whole industry to solve a crisis. Right. And we've seen this before. We have a awards program for um, associations improving the world. And after every crisis, we get applications a year or two later about what they did to bring together the industry, whether it's the hurricanes that mm-hmm, um, sure. there was a great one, uh, the Diabetes Response Coalition that brought together um, a bunch of companies and associations to bring insulin to affected populations. All these types of rebuilding efforts from the power grid to after um natural disasters. So I know associations are going to rise to the occasion and be the source that brings together the best ideas and, and implements them. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I love that as a parting shot the right there. Music? The cue music? The associations with that one? are here. Mary Kate's let us know. No, um, uh, appreciate you joining us today. Absolutely. Yep. Not an easy topic to Not talk about. Not an easy topic to talk about. It's a hot about. topic. Yeah. But to have both of you, you know, from the other side, obviously <laughs> digital folks are looking for new solutions, but to have both of you with the association experience and to be the resource, ASE Center is the, place to, <laughs> .org is the place to be. Boom. Folks, this is Advocacy Help Desk. Uh, you can go to advocacyhelpdesk.com to, uh, to see our full resource library of all our episodes. Uh, we're on YouTube, so you can see our beautiful faces. Uh, and we're also on every single audio platform. So if you can think Spotify, iTunes, weird stuff I don't even know about. Um, Blake, make sure that we're where wherever you can listen um and we encourage you to listen to the podcast on the go if you're on the metro um or you're traveling somewhere maybe not right now um or uh if you're you're quarantined yeah if you're quarantined (laughs) uh if you're at your desk uh you can pop us up on youtube while you do work and uh and watch and listen passively and mary kate you're gonna come back and visit us again absolutely i love it we'll be she'll be back on an episode soon uh to talk more about positive association trends Um, and best practices and tips but this is what this uh, show is all about it's about bringing in the experts chatting about what we see across the industries trend wise and digitizing that so you can get the best practices and tips from your desk or from your metro seat like me I got an hour and a half metro seat typically so out and rusted whoops (laughs) Uh, folks as always uh, also go to absolutelyhelpdesk.com to drop us a line if you're having a challenge we do help people in need so if you're facing something and you don't know where to turn drop us a line we will put you with someone who can help you um, solve your challenges that's what we're all about help 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 and until next time keep advocating